The City University of New York is an indelible part of the fabric of New York City itself. And this year, CUNY celebrates a major anniversary. So we look back now, not just with a crash course on 175 years of CUNY history, but 175 years of New York history. The year is 1847. Iowa just became the 29th state. America is 14 years from the Civil War. Coffee costs seven cents per pound. A carpenter earns $1.72 per day. Horse-drawn carts fill the streets. New York City's population is 500,000. And college is largely regarded as only the domain of high society. This is the backdrop to which the City University began with just 143 students 175 years ago with the founding of the Free Academy, the future City College, a rather radical experiment whether the children of the people, the children of the whole people, can be educated and whether an institution of the highest grade can be successfully controlled by the popular will, not by the privileged few. After 175 years, you could look back at the significance of this experiment through a lens of the famous and influential who have studied at CUNY. Andrew Grove, the CEO who built Intel into the largest semiconductor company in the world. New York State Poet Laureate Audre Lorde, who dedicated her life to social activism and stands as an inaugural inductee to the National LGBTQ Wall of Honor. May I never lose that terror that keeps me brave. May I owe nothing I cannot repay. Or Bernie Sandler, the godmother of Title IX, the landmark 1972 law which flung open the doors for women in sports. There's Henry Kissinger, Bella Abzug, Jerry Seinfeld, Cardi B, you could look at it through that lens. And certainly, no story of CUNY is complete without them. But as an academic institution, first and foremost, perhaps it's best to look at 175 years through a lens of academic achievements. Scientists like Marie Maynard Daly, the first black woman in America to earn a PhD in chemistry, whose work is the very reason we know to watch our cholesterol. Or Jonas Salk, who would be hailed as nothing short of a miracle worker when he developed a vaccine for polio in 1955. Who owns the patent on this vaccine? Well, the, the people, I, I would say, there is no patent. This is, could you patent the sun? <laughs> Over the years, CUNY can claim 151 Fulbright scholars, 26 MacArthur Genius Grant recipients, and 13 Nobel Prize winners. And these kinds of academic pursuits continue today. In 2014, CUNY's Advanced Science Research Center opened its doors as part of a multi-billion dollar initiative to be a leading hub of scientific research, preparing the next generation of salts and dailies. You could look at it through that lens, and certainly, no story of CUNY is complete without them. But of course, many colleges can tout alumni Many colleges can tout achievements. So what makes CUNY special? Well, across 25 colleges and 250,000 students enrolled annually, CUNY is the largest urban university in the nation. And that may be a fitting lens to look back on CUNY's history through. Those 250,000 students it serves, the demographics reflecting the makeup of the city, a people's history. This is New York, after all. It is America's melting pot of social mobility. In fact, a 2017 study showed that CUNY propels almost six times as many low-income students into the middle class and beyond as all eight Ivy League campuses, plus Duke, MIT, Stanford, and Chicago combined. New York has always been the traditional hub of American immigration, of course. In the mid-1800s, when the Free Academy was founded, it was the German and the Irish. At the turn of the century, it was Italians and Eastern Europeans, Jews. And at the time, while most university doors were closed to this part of society, 
City College did allow them. And while it still had a ways to go in allowing non-whites and women to attend, its female counterpart, Normal College, the future Hunter College, was already admitting its first eight black students by 1873. In the first half of the 20th century, a lot of the migration was internal, with the great migration of black Americans to northern cities. And since 1965, immigration has been prominent from Latin America and Asia. And if you look at CUNY's enrollment today, the numbers echo these population movements. As of 2021, CUNY's student body stands at about 25% black, 29% Hispanic, 22% Asian, and 24% white. More than a third are foreign born, counting 200 countries of origin. Point being, historically speaking, no other city has educated so much of its own population. And that is a unique dynamic between a city, its citizens, and its education system. In many ways, 175 years of CUNY history is 175 years of New York and America's history. From every era, all the way back since its beginning. The Civil War. Before his presidency, City College's second president, Alex S. Webb, was a war hero, earning the Congressional Medal of Honor for his command at Gettysburg. World War I. City College offers one of the largest student training programs in the country. The Roar in Twenties sees a heightened focus on science, with Albert Einstein's first ever American visit beginning at City College, where he lectures on the theory that has just made him an international celebrity, his theory of general relativity. Also, a focus on industry, with the birth of a dedicated business school, the future Arup College. The Great Depression. City College cements its reputation at the time of intellectual left-wing activism, protest against militarism and socioeconomic injustice. Indeed, it was called the Harvard of the Proletariat. World War II. City College launches America's first documentary film school to counteract Nazi propaganda. The future Lehman College hosts the first meetings of the United Nations in America. It also offers trailblazing naval training to women. 3,500 waves and a formal review to mark their anniversary. In two years' time, the waves have made a brilliant record. Soon, the first contingents may go overseas. In the post-war era, new colleges open to meet increasing demands for education. In 1961, the City University of New York is officially born. 1960s New York sees civil unrest, like much of the country. Queens College student Andrew Goodman is a victim of the infamous Freedom Summer Murders in 1964, while registering black voters in segregated Mississippi. The next year, Martin Luther King Jr. speaks at the campus. He, along with others, paid the supreme price for this struggle, and I'm sure that we will see in many ways that his death was not in vain. And after hard-fought student protests, in 1970, CUNY opens its doors to dramatically greater minority enrollment, better reflecting the demographics of the city. When New York faces bankruptcy in the mid-70s, CUNY faces it too in a sign of the times requiring tuition for the first time. And when New York faces tragedy on September 11, 2001, CUNY faces that too, as the Borough of Manhattan Community College loses a building and transforms another into a Port Authority command center during the crisis. Over 175 years, New York has been exalted, disparaged, half torn down and built back up. And CUNY has been there for every boom and for every bust. From 143 students to a quarter million. A historically unique New York institution and reflection of the city itself as it begins the next 175 years. With the words of its founder as relevant now as they were in 1847. For the record, I'm Ari Goldberg.